All right, welcome back, my friends, to another Luminous Mysteries. My name's Tom, and today is Thursday, April 7th, 2022. I, I got it right there. I, I remembered. Anyway, um, so we got our first reading in Genesis 17, 3 through 9, and then John 8, 51 through 59. So let's dive in. When Abram prostrated himself... God spoke to him. My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be called Abraham. For I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I'll make you na- I'll make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you throughout the ages in an everlasting pact to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Canaan, as a permanent possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Psalm 95. And we got our gospel. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets, yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? Or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my father who glorifies me. For whom you say he is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones and threw it at him. But Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. So there's just, in both of these readings, just so much symbolism. Um... In th- on the surface of the word, you know, it has its meaning. And a lot of times even that meaning doesn't have any reflection onto the symbolism that's below it. Um, it's a placeholder. And we we see this in our um, practicing of our faith. When the priest is up there. Um, saying the mass and doing the blessings and consecrating the host. In that moment, he is the placeholder. He is the he is the symbol of um, Jesus blessing that bread and wine. And his internal nature, the priest's internal nature, has no bearing or no significance. To what is actually happening. He could be the most wicked, vile, unbelieving person on the face of the planet. But in that moment, he is the placeholder of Jesus. Blessing the bread and wine and giving us eternal life. So as we read in our scriptures, in our daily readings, it is important to come at them with those same those same glasses those that that same 
truth. That although these are words and although they are strung together to form a story, each and every word, each and every phrase has a deeper internal meaning. These are just placeholders for the divine truth and the divine wisdom that's held within them. As we can see, I mean, um, when Jesus says, if I glorify myself, my glory will, is worth nothing, but it is the Father who glorifies me. And then he goes on to say, before Abraham came to be, I am. And both of those both of those things are, are are pointing toward towards his inner divine nature. Um, I I also pick out a lot of other things in, in what I uh, ended up writing today. Um, but also the being a host of nations and being extremely fertile. I want to point out that when Abram, before he made the covenant, the church at that time had lost its inner um, inner worship due to their turning to the, the their their self worship. So it only had the external worship. It only had the you know the going to temple and doing the readings and doing their sacrifices, right? It didn't have any of the internal truths. All those were lost to the people to the point that even Abraham didn't recognize God. And even Isaac and Jacob didn't recognize God. Because the church, the the third church after the flood, had lost its internal, had lost the internal divine teaching the divine wisdom and this was actually a blessing from God because you can profane the external and yes it's a sin but it's not a grave sin and it's not unredeemable but if you profane the internal truth that is really something that twists your soul so far as to make it not be able to ever accept a divine truth, any of the divine truths. And that prevents God from from salva saving you. So let's get into my uh, the, the, the reflection here. God made a covenant with Abram and thus changed the essence of Abram to Abraham. As seen earlier in Genesis chapter 2, we read that Adam named all of the animals. To name something is to understand its essence, its fundamental nature. In chapter 2 of Genesis, Adam is naming all the animals which represent our feelings. Adam names them and then this means that he comes to a fundamental understanding of all the aspects of each feeling within himself. After Adam has is still and left, or af after this, Adam is still left incomplete and unhappy or unjoyful. He's not, there's, there's something missing. This is when God makes Eve. Eve represents our free will or our thinking mind, the, the, the part that of us that comprehends and thinks um, we are separate. Uh, if you look at the, the relationship between the left and the right hemisphere, sorry, <laughs> as you can see at the left and the right, but mine is, yeah, anyway. So there was, uh, anyway, getting into the weeds, I'll, I'll stop there. But uh, where we, okay, Adam and Eve were both within us as aspects of our mind. Being one is a representative of our uh, one being representative of our feelings kept within our hearts, and the other being representative of our thinking mind or free will kept within our you know, or our, our heads or our brains. This is important to understand as it sheds light of the divine truth and wisdom within our readings today. 
When God made the covenant with Abram, he was changed, as seen in his name changing. This name change indicates that God not only was above heaven, but was now within Adam. Adam or Abram, Abram's heart was open. This is the divine spark that our creator places within each of us. It has this understanding, this divine truth that came to Abram in this moment. He realized his connection to God was and is within him as a part of his wholeness. The Jews, the children of Abraham, lost this divine truth as their gaze lowered from heaven towards earthly things. Being a very smart and analytical people, they began to trust only what they could experience in their human body with the senses that were connected to their mind, you know, sight, taste, touch, feel. They lost their connection to their hearts, to their feelings that impact, that are impacted with the Father in heaven. We see in our Lord Jesus when he refers to their hearts as being hardened, closed off to their minds, closed off to the influence of heaven and the love of God that flows through heaven to the hearts than to the minds of God's children. It starts, God, God speaks to you through here. On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant within the ages or throughout the ages. This covenant is the divine truth of God's spark within our hearts. Yesterday we read that the Jews knew that this fatherhood of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was a spiritual nature. That to claim them at um that to claim them as a father was a claim of the covenant of God kept within their heart. To keep the covenant as your core value. But in action, the Jews did not do this. They were filled with pride at being the chosen of God. This led to the exclusion of all other people in the world. You cannot be a Jew if you weren't born, in, in, born as a Jew. A prideful act is what not only kept their gaze from lifting to heaven, but also what kept them from entering heaven after death. Jesus says, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. Our Lord is saying, if you keep the divine truth that I am within your hearts, this truth will allow you to enter heaven after you pass over to the other side. This truth bomb wa that Jesus dropped was like a Moab, a mother of all bombs the Jews and even most and even most of his disciples even t and, and this was even uh, you know just something that the, his disciples couldn't accept as many left over this right after right after this passage it says many left this truth meant that all people of the world were open to the saving presence of the truth that God's love God's spark of light, God's divine truth and wisdom are within your heart and have always been there. See, find, see the parable of finding Jesus in the temple. They replied to Jesus saying, Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? The Jews thought that their connection to God diminished with the death of Abraham. They thought that only the only way to God was in the temple and in the fathers of the faith, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus attempted to break through their hardened hearts as he kept trying to clarify his teaching. Then they said to Jesus, You are not fifty years old, you have and you claim to have seen Abraham. This indicates not only did they have a prejudice that only seasoned leaders had any true insight on God. But the number also has a meaning. I want to add that this same prejudice is everywhere today. Just look at the meme phrase, I'm not a biologist, being thrown around in an attempt to deny the truth of the blessed differences between man and woman. The number 50 being a multiple of five, five meaning some, a little bit that God needs of you to work with his divine will. It is ten times five, so 
divine completeness working through that small part. The completeness of God the Father working with that little part of you, that spark within you. This union brings the insight of Abraham. The understanding that when you choose in your mind to work with the will of God within your heart, that God's love is manifested into the world. This happens with our service to heaven and the love of God that flows from the highest of heights of heaven through heaven and the divine human nature of Jesus then to you. This divine truth they could not only accept due to their hardened hearts, and they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The stones represented their use of the divine word to throw at Jesus, God. This is their use of the word and worship of God with the internal intent of worshiping themselves. Because they worshiped themselves, Jesus was hidden from them and left the temple area. The divine truth and wisdom were hidden, and God was driven from their hearts because of the falsity and evil at the core of their worship. It was driven from the temple area means that they drove God and the divine spark from their hearts. They closed off their hearts to their mind. The union of Adam and Eve was separate, severed. Their heart was divorced from their mind, and they were spewed out of the mouth of God. This teaching today explains why prayer from the heart is so vitally important to us. It is through our building the connection to our hearts that we also build that connection to God and heaven. With the opening of our hearts to our will, our mind, we begin to hear that small, quiet inner voice. We begin to choose to follow the voice's direction. As we follow that voice, we build trust in that voice. And our faith grows that that voice within will guide us to divine goodness and truth. The spark of light from God is in your heart. Quiet your mind. Focus your attention on your heart. And the door will be open for you to find Jesus in the temple area. In his Father's house that is within your heart. Um, so this is... This is uh, Israel wrestling with the... Oh, you can't see it. It's not on screen. <laughs> Never mind. We'll go back up to this picture. This is a picture of the parable of Je finding Jesus in the temple. So we got Mary and Joseph, most likely, frantically searching for Jesus. And he is within the temple asking questions and teaching the elders within there. So, and you can see he's holy because he's got the halo around his head. So his head, his mind is filled with heavenly things. It's filled with heavenly thoughts. So heaven within our, our Lord Jesus is... His, his 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 will is perfectly connected with heaven, which is within his heart. So his mind and his heart have that perfect connection, and and as a result, his will is is connected with the will of heaven, and his his head is full of heavenly things. And that's our goal, right? Our goal is to become like that, to become saints on earth, to become like our Lord, to find him within our hearts. And it takes a little bit of work. Well. It seems like a lot to us. Trust me, it, it takes a lot of time and practice and a lot of prayer. And I'm not I'm not there yet. Don't don't let me I don't want to come across as being, you know, the wise teacher or someone that's far down the road. I am definitely not far down the road. I'm barely climbing that mountain. I, I you know, I struggle. So and that's the point of this ministry is to help help each other, help help us cuz we're we're all on that road that road to climb the mountain to see our lord so i hope and i pray that you get something profound something that lifts you up out of this message 
and uh, motivates you to seek that ultimate goal of becoming a saint. I love you. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow.